What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Verted Intro YouTube channel. This is episode 12 of the Quarantine Tapes called Kernel of Life. So quick background of the setting of this passage is this is right after a group of Greek Jewish believers um, come to the disciples and ask to speak to Jesus. The, these are people that are obviously Greek, but they believe the Jewish stuff. They go through the Jewish traditions. They go to the synagogues to worship. They learn the Old Testament and stuff the same way that the Jewish believers did themselves. They're just Greeks. And this is something that back then really wasn't um, uh, common as it is today, that a lot of people out of the the known culture goes to believe something else. Greeks usually believed in the Greek mythology. mythology. Jews believed in the Jewish traditions, and that's about it. There was no really any cross-cultural contamination as a as you would say um so this was um really important to think about especially that they, he, they are going to be in jesus's presence during this teaching and it just shows the heart of jesus and the fact that it didn't matter who you were what you look like or where you came from he was going to teach you just like he was going to teach a person that was a brother to him whether it was um, blood or non-blood he was going to teach someone the same way through love grace and mercy and that's the amazing thing about jesus is that he broke those cultural boundaries in order to gain people's trust in order to gain people's belief and he didn't care who you were he was going to lead you to god whether you look like looked like him or if you look like someone else that um wasn't like him so that's something that's always stuck out to me about who jesus was and that's something i try to admit in my um life every single day is the fact that accept other people's boundary uh cultural boundaries and shatter my cultural boundaries and see other people's perspectives and aspects of life because that's the only way we can truly grow in this world is by gaining and learning and taking in different knowledges and aspects of what we can do on a daily basis so the passage i'm going to be reading out of today is john 12 verses 24 to 26 which states very truly i tell you unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies it remains only a single seed but if it dies it produces many seeds anyone who loves their life will lose it while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life who, whoever serves me must follow me and where i am my servant will also be my father will honor the one who serves me so the i have a couple points and kind of the second point is more of like towards the application part but the thing I want to really focus on right now is the fact how Jesus um, uses the um, the death and the principle of life through the death of a plant. So Jesus basically is saying that the only way a plant can really become a plant is if that seed dies. And that's the same way that we have to kind of go at our life. And that's where the second, the next two verses come into play is the fact that we are not meant to love our life. Obviously, we're not supposed to commit suicide. This is a meaning of we're not supposed to be living and loving the world that's around us because that is full of darkness, full of hate. We're supposed to be longing for the next life of eternal life with Jesus in the kingdom of God. And that's something that we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be denying ourselves and carrying our cross daily, meaning deny ourselves of our old ways, the ways that are leading us to... Um, eternal death and leading us to eternal destruction we need to be um denying those selves because it's not gaining us any gaining any steps forward towards god it's not making us any better it's just giving us steps backwards and that's not what god wants us to do he wants us to continually moving forward in our journey to, towards him he doesn't want us to be going away from him and also too is G, the thing that i thought about when i was reading this and studying this is the fact that Jesus had to die in order for the Holy Spirit to come into play, in order for God to be glorified, in order for us to live, in order for us to be born again, in order for us to be have that eternal life with God. And his death is that death of the seed, is the fact that we are that plant. We are the production 
the reproduction of his sowing of that seed and that's what i think is so amazing and it's the same thing we are called to do we're called to be we're called to die to ourselves we're call, called to go through that baptism of accepting jesus in our life and when we die to ourselves and go through that baptism that's when we become the beautiful plant and the beautiful strong tall plant that god wants us to be and that's something that we're supposed to be doing is continually again dying to ourselves and moving forward and not taking steps back and God has planted that seed, seeds in our heart and he wants us to continually watering it. He doesn't want us to not do anything to it. So like I said, quick, easy one. I think it's kind of self-explanatory. Um, the fact that in order for something to become beautiful, sometimes it has to be knocked down. And the way I think about it, and I tell friends all the time who are going through tough times, and it's something I try to remind myself when I'm going through a tough time is sometimes... Things have to be broken and knocked down in order to be built up that much more stronger and that much more beautiful. And as one of my favorite analogies to always use is scars. And when we have scars, the cool thing, one, is the fact that God ha get, has given us the ability to heal ourselves. But also the fact that a scar is a reminder of what we've been through. It's a reminder that we've been through it and that we've survived. Another thing too is with scars, it's tough. It toughens our skin. It's just not just, it's no longer soft. It's no longer smooth. It's now rough. It's going to be able to take damage a lot more easier in a sense. And that's something that we have to be aware of and kind of love about them because a lot of us hate our scars, both literally and figuratively. We're ashamed of our past. We're ashamed of what we've been through. Meanwhile, this should, we should be praising our battle scars we should be showing them off and be like hey i made it through this war i made it through this battle the devil tempted me this way but god lifted me that way he made me that much more stronger and that's something that we need to be praising god for is being able to get out of those battles and getting over those obstacles that the devil has put in front of us so towards the application is do what jesus says deny yourself and lose your life daily continually Brush off the things that the devil has tempted you, tempted you with. One thing that I do is literally have an index card that I carry around with me. It's over there. Um, I was going to go run and get it. But I drew a cross on it and I wrote down all my triggers and all what I, all the sins that I fall to on not a regular basis. But what I fall to the most common, one of them being pride and one of them being lust and the fact that I look at it daily to remind myself, okay, this is where the devil reminds me. This is my cross. I'm called to carry this cross and remind myself, this is what I've been through and this is how I've gotten out of it. And this is something as a reminder that we have to do and literally carry our cross the same way Jesus did and carry it to our death because that's where all our sins are going to go is to death so we can rise again to become the better person, the better Christian in life with Christ. The next um, application I have is serve God and live for God. Um, basically doing that is by going out, sharing your faith, sharing your story, sharing your scars. A lot of us have the same scars, but we're so ashamed of it that we think we're the only ones that go through it. Meanwhile, the person next door or even the person downstairs or even our closest of friends have gone through that or are going through that and they need help to get through that. And that's what's beautiful about these scars is they tell stories and they're meant to be told. So, and then my last um, challenge for you guys in application is, this, like I said before, carry your cross daily. Remember why you do these things. Remember what happens. And remember that we serve the ultimate God that died on the cross for us to live the life that we live. Lord, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. You died the death that we are daily worthy for the death you didn't deserve and the day we daily deserve um thank you for taking that burden from us and then forgiving our sins and allowing us to live the life that you allow us to live i pray you continually help us guiding us giving us the courage giving us the strength to be unashamed of our scars and show them off to the world allow us to glorify you with those scars and allow us to continually moving forward on a daily basis. Give us the strength, encouraged to and endurance to carry the, our cross daily for it is a daily battle. And each day is a different battle because we are living a life of war, Lord. It's a spiritual warfare that the devil continually 
fights against us against, but we know that you have won the war. And I pray that you continually help us through these tough times. I pray all this in your son's glorious, awesome name. Amen. As always, comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification button and share with a friend, share with a family member, share with a loved one, and always share with an enemy because you never know, you might bring someone to Christ just as you've been brought to Christ. Thank you and um, deny yourself. Be the kernel, be the plant, and remember the kernel. As always, much love.